The following program is a Creative Magic Network production. You're listening to the Frederick Bai Show, where sky is the limit and space is the place. Here's your host, Frederick Bai. Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in, sit down, relax, put your buds on. This is the Frederick Bai Show, and this radio podcast is about unleashing your creativity. We talk to experts, we step into the unknown. It is an inspirational, magical, intuitive radio podcast as we chat with charismatic enigmas. That's right, artists, people from around the globe. Musicians, singers, radio hosts, business people, photographers, everything in between. I am by the man of the hour, the man with the power to sweet to be sour. Hey, I sting like a bee, produce sweet honey, and I am pretty. And today we're going to have a show that, you know, we're going to talk about one of my favorite of all. And you know what my favorite subject of all is, of all is, you know, I love to talk spirituality. And I had a debate recently with a guy who is totally not spiritual and it was I was out of my comfort zone but you know what I I I'm okay I got out of it I think safe and sound and you know what I still am a spiritual creative dude whether they like it or not <laughs> and today that as I said we're going to have an amazing show we have somebody who's a colleague of mine she's she's I would say she's a friend of mine sure let, let me tell you this people I love people who go out and do what they want to do. They get out of their comfort zone. Maybe they were an employee and now they say, Hey, you know what? I have this creative spark. I have this thing that goes in my, inside myself that goes, you know what? I need to expand. I need to get out of my comfort zone. I need to do something. What is my purpose in life? And today we're going to talk to Solange. Tardif, she's a fr- that's a French name, and she's the founder of Your Nature Unveiled, which helps people improve their well-being and vitality. This woman does a lot of things through physical conditioning, through spirituality, uh, through health. I mean, a bunch of things. So, welcome to the show, Solange. Hello, hello. How are you doing? <laughs> I am fabulous. I am fabulous. How was my intro? Oh, that was great. That was a intro. I never got the, such a praise. That's great. I love that. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So, as I said, Solange, you know, I look. We know we know each other a little bit, and um, I think it's just going to be a fun, cool conversation that we're going to have today. And as I said, we're going to talk about spirituality. It's one of your favorite subject too. And you know, I I wanted you on the show because I think you have an interesting journey an interesting path and um i think you really bring something to 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 uh you know to the listeners really um all right so you're doing a lot of things yes first of all g- give us an idea here of, of your background a little bit um well you know um where to start there's so much so so many things <laughs> where, where where were you where are you again. from where, where are you from uh solange um, I'm from uh, close to Quebec City. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, I was born in a family of 14 ch- children. So I uh, know big family nowadays. We don't have uh, big families like that. And um, I know um, my family, they were like, uh, they like to have children. So they wanted to have many of them. And um, I was the 13th child. So um, I was raised, raised amongst a, a bunch of boys, one of the boys almost. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it was great because in a way it, it uh, allowed me to learn sharing and, you know, big family parties and being with a lot of people and very having a lot with that. And I think um, from my background, what I learned most of it is, um, is uh, my mother was a very courageous uh, woman, I guess, because I don't would have that many children myself, you know, mm-hmm. but um Yes, it it was a lot of uh, hard work, but at the same time, I think I I grew through that with uh, a lot of good values, and um, you know, it, it was very artistic as well. My mother was a singer. My father was playing violin. We uh, we like to sing a lot. We are we are singers a lot in my family, actually. Uh, for myself, I learned to play gu- guitar, and a couple of my brothers. Others did learn guitar as well, and uh, we play uh, piano once in a while. So it was very much of a kind of our artistic family, I guess. Um, basically, I guess I was raised on, on a farm as well, so I was very close to nature. 
I like to to be uh, close to animals and and enjoyed the, a lot. Seeing that was a, something I really liked. Um, so where did it um, help me to be spiritual? I guess I think my mother was really the big model for me because she was very much a, a believer, but not in a religious way. You know, she was uh, she was um, spiritual, not so much uh, dogmatic or anything like that. She just really believed and um, and lived her faith accordingly belief I guess so my mother was kind of an inspiration for me when it comes to spirituality but I still didn't really know what it meant I guess until I, I was seen um, because you know my family they were going to church and things like that mm-hmm. but um, for myself let, I yeah, let, yeah. Let, 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 let me let me ask you this now you grew up in a family of 14. And you're yes. pretty young. I know this. Yes. I mean, were you the only one in your neighborhood that, who grew up in a family of 14? I mean, what's, <laughs> what's it like to grow up in a family of 14? Is, it, is, there, a lot, is there a lot of chaos? You know, there's all these multiple personalities. I guess, did you learn something about yourself, you know, maybe growing up with a family of 14 like this? Yes, I guess so, because we're really all strong-headed, you know, um, in my family. And for my part, I think my big challenge in my case was I was, um, you know, with, uh, with uh, a bunch of boys. So I kind of had to learn how to be, um, to find my feminine side through that. I don't know if you understand what I mean with this. No, no, go, go like, ahead, explain, yeah. Yes. Well, the thing is, when you're surrounded with boys, and stuff like that it's it's very competitive it's really about being strong and things like that mm-hmm. and for myself i had to find my way through that to figure out what what is it, what does it mean to be feminine i guess because mm-hmm. of course my mother was there but you know that that was different it was my mother it wasn't like like uh, being like with a bunch of females around and knowing what to do to be a female and things like that it was a bit uh, awkward for that i guess but in a way it taught me that it's really important to reconnect with myself and go and find what it means to be, you know, feminine. And uh, this is where I, I found that for me, creativity was very good to bring my feminine side, you know, to, to be able to express my emotion, to be able to reconnect with my true self. I found that, you know, when you go inside yourself and you get inspired by creativity, you reconnect more truly with your feminine side. And, to me, this is what kind of I get. I guess this is what I got from the fact that I was with a, a bunch of boys and where it was so competitive and uh, you know. But um, at the same time, it was uh, it was fun. I guess you know I had always a lot of action at home. <laughs> Never got bored. Yeah, I, I can imagine that. How did you express your creativity back then? Back then, I was writing a lot. I, I'm actually, um, you know, I, I have a background of um, literature. I studied literature for 10 years and I was actually very inclined to write and read a lot. Um, basically, I spent a lot of time during my, my youth uh, reading. I, I read a bunch of books. I don't. I think I had a library at home and I read the whole library by myself. Uh, there was a lot of books in there. My mom was very uh, good for that. She always uh, made sure that uh, we had a lot of books at home. And she was reading stories. She was a storyteller, you know, and she was influencing me in that way because she liked to tell story about her family and, and everything like that. So I, I got inspired by that, I guess. I, I, I like to read and write. So I was writing books when I was younger, too. And um, I started playing guitar and singing and things like that. So, yeah, that really influenced me with uh, with my creative side, that aspect, you know. Right. And OK, so, uh, you know, OK, so you, you mentioned that uh, your, your mother was singer, your father was, you know, played violin. Um, what was the mindset of the adults around you when it came to a career in creativity or, you know, in an entrepreneurship or arts and stuff like that? Were you were you allowed or were you pushed? Because, you know, some families, you know, if you don't become a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, you're. You know, you're going to be a screw up in life. I mean, you know, if if they really push their children to go in the in these types of rational jobs and careers, were you that way or were you kind of free to do whatever the heck you wanted? Um, I think for my family, it was mostly important that I followed what I really wanted to do. 
Uh, my mother was big on study. She really wanted us to study, but at the same time, she wasn't pushing it or, or anything like that. She was more like, yeah, follow what you like to do. Follow what uh, what's really good for you. Because back then, you know, in high school, I was in choirs, so I was singing a lot already. She wanted to give me like, um, you know, singing lessons and things like that. But we we didn't have a lot of money. So I think in our case, obviously, as you might guess, a big family is uh, it's expensive. <laughs> so, we didn't have, yeah, we didn't have that much money. So it was kind of difficult to uh, find the money for that. But she was really wanting me to actually um, express myself through singing and music. And I really, really enjoyed that at the time. And still I do, actually. This is mm-hmm. something that's really deeply uh, important to me, you know, that, that I sing regularly. I like to listen to music. I think it's the best way to to be transported to to be inspired and i think it's um it's the best way to raise your vibration basically mm-hmm. i don't know if you agree with me with that but I, for myself it is in a ways um and most people i think if you find the music that's right for you it's going to help you to uh, clear clear your chakras and most likely like help you to raise your vibration change your mood you know change your your way of thinking sometimes Right. All right. Once again, we're here with Solange Tardif. She's a founder of Your Nature Unveiled. I like that name. I really like it, which helps people improve their well-being and vitality. She does. She does a bunch of things: physical conditioning, health, spirituality, and um, all right. So, let me ask you this: When did your strong will to explore your spirituality come? I mean. Where does it come from? Why did you start it? And what what did it bring, you know, what was the catalyst? Um, I think it was always kind of there for me. You know, when I was younger, I, I kind of talked to spirits, I guess. It's funny to say, but I didn't know it was that at the time. I wasn't, you know, consciously doing it, I guess. But I kind of felt like it, there was presence around me. And I don't know, I was talking to them. And later how, on, I kind how of... How were you talking to them? What, what do you mean? Well, more you like talking? I was feeling that presence. So I was just, you know, talking to them, having conversation, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> it's just okay. it, it was I was feeling them. I wasn't seeing them per se, but I was feeling them. And mm-hmm. I know at some point, you know, one day my grandmother, she uh, she died around Christmas. Actually, she I think it was around the 28th of December or something like that. And the, the night she died, I got her visit during the night and um that was really weird, actually, because I started talking to her as just, as if I knew already she was dead. And I was like, well, well, what happened there and stuff like that? And I was pretty sure she was dead. But at the time, I didn't know she was. I was maybe like, I don't know, maybe eight or seven years old, I guess. Mm-hmm. And uh, finally, when I um, in the morning, when I woke up, I heard the phone and then my mom went to the phone. And I think it, her sister t- told her, well, you know, uh, uh, you know, our mom is de- is dead so and then i figured out oh wow grandma she just died i didn't know about that but i was talking to her i guess mm-hmm. i don't know that was just kind of funny but uh yeah but then after that it kind of faded a bit i didn't pay too much attention to that but uh, when i got 19 um 19 years old i kind of met somebody and this is really where i got a turning point about that um that fact, you know, what it means to be spiritual and what it means to be connected to to God, I guess. I, I You can call it source or universe if you prefer. To me, um, at the time, it was more like God, I suppose, because that was, that was what I knew. That was my background with, you know, Catholic uh, religion and everything. But um, this friend I met, she was very into um, spirituality, I guess, but, you know, very... Um, uh, how can I say that? She was very charismatic in a way that she was really living it truly. You know, she was like um, having this true and personal relationship with God. And I was like, well, what does it mean exactly? What do you mean true and personal? God is somewhere out there. It's not real. It's just uh, like an idea. And I was like, uh, I don't really understand what you mean with that. But then at the time, she she was kind of inspiring me to uh, pursue that a bit more. And this is when I actually started to, you know, try to reconnect a bit more with God and see what it's like to be really connected with the soul, I suppose. And this is probably the most wonderful year I had in my life. (laughs) It was crazy. Yeah, because um, 
I'm sorry? Why? Why? Um, because I, I really, um, you know, for the first time I was truly seeing what it meant to be like having an un un unconditional love for something or s like for somebody, I guess. Mm. It wasn't the God that you see in the Bible or anything like that. It wasn't a, it was just a true connection because what I started to do at, at the time is, um, I started to not pray, but I guess journaling or talking every day to God. And I started to having like a real personal relationship with God, I guess. And to me, that was like reconnecting to myself, reconnecting to my true self where I was really in, in line with, in alignment with my soul, you know? And I felt so good about that because it was like, wow, everything is wonderful when you see through those eyes, you know, when you see through unconditional love and when you just get inspired by by this strength, this wonderful feeling that comes over you when you truly follow what the, your, your bliss, you know. Mm -hmm. And I was um, I was just really happy, right? I, I'm not saying that I'm not happy nowadays. I'm just saying that at the time it was just like such such a a nice discovery and this deep connection I had with the source in a way, and it was just wonderful because I, for the first time I was really connecting with myself as well, who I am and and how God sees me, you know, because this is what it is as well. Because when you have a rel relationship with somebody, they mirror a bit what you are. And I started to see what I look like in his eyes, you know, or I'm saying is, but it could be she. I'm not I'm not putting a, a sex on the person or the entity. I'm just saying at the time I saw the, the reflection of what he thought I, I was or what I, he felt I was. And I was so great uh, to see uh, this perspective of what I am really and, and truly that always stayed with me. You know, after that, I started to be like more, OK, well, I have to to seek further with this, you know, I have to try to find a way to, to reconnect with myself at a deeper level and learn more about it and, and pursue that because this is truly what I'm meant to be doing here, you know? So. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, you met, you went to the military later on, but uh, we're going to talk, we're going to talk about that. Um, once again, we're here with Solange Tardif. She's a friend of mine. She's a colleague of mine, and uh, she's the founder of Your Nature Unveiled, which helps people improve their well-being and vitality. She does phys physical conditioning. She does a bunch of things. She does health, uh, she, uh, health counseling, and um, obviously spiritual counseling, and and not just counseling, but she's a spiritual being. And uh, right before continuing this conversation, people, if you have a passion. You know, something that fuels your curiosity. Well, on top of getting fascinating interviews, such as this one, straight to your inbox. When you subscribe to our free Creative Magic community, you will get super cool exclusive gifts in return, such as the ebook, Happiness Quotes by the Ambassador of Happiness herself, Maura Sweeney, one of our hosts, and also an exclusive conversation with two of my favorite people, Alex Okoroji and the blind blogger, Max Ivy, another one of our hosts, as we talk about the influence of friends and college education on our lives, the competitiveness in a crowded field, the importance of business and financial education and arts and entrepreneurship, and more, I promise you will get inspired and entertained. Subscribe for free at frederickby.com. That's Frederick with a C. I like bye -bye dot com. All right. So now you have this, this, you found out about your spirituality. Uh, it brings something to you. I mean, it, it enlightens you. It brings obviously fulfillment and peace and, and love. Um, but you, you, you go into the military and, yeah. and, you know, and, and then you start your business. How did that come about? How did the, how did your current business come about? Um, that was something that came later on because at the time, um, you know, when I was 18, I, I joined the military because I figured, okay, well, I need some money. Why not the military? I guess I could, uh, you know, uh, study at the same time and then um, learn about a few things on the way, right? So mm -hmm. um, I joined the military at the time because uh, I figured that it would be a good experience to, uh, to go and travel and things like that, right? Um, and plus, I, I had a lot of people in my family that went through it and they really enjoyed it. So I was like kind of a bit of an influence through that. 
Um, so when I went to the recruiting office at the time, the, I was like, well, I don't really know what I want to do, but I guess I just want to be in the, the army. So they're like, okay, uh, I guess you could be infantry or something like that. And I was like, okay, why not? I don't know what it means, but why not? <laughs> but it turns out that, um, it turns out that my vision wasn't that great. So funny enough, they offered me, okay, well, do you want to be a, a communicator or a medic? And I was like, huh, medic. That sounds great. Why not? I like biology. So it was kind of a, you know, by chance that I went in that trade. But funny enough, it, it turned out that it was the best trade for me because um, I found out that it, it was good for me. I, I really enjoyed helping people. I really, uh, I really like to serve in a way because one thing that people might not understand about the military is it's all about service. It's about service to others, service to to your to your boss, to your subordinates, to your patients. It's uh, even when you're in charge, you're serving everybody but yourself because everybody needs you, needs you to take decisions and, and stuff like that. So for me, being in the military allowed me to to develop myself when it comes to service to others. But at the same time, it, it helped me to uh, share my, my knowledge because I had to teach, I had to supervise, I had to manage many things at the same time. So it was a good experience for me. But at some point, I just got to the you know, the end of it, because I was like, well, I'm not progressing through it anymore. Um, my new, it, it's not very much of a spiritual place to be in. I, it's, it, I guess it's interesting. I, I had a lot of a, a nice experience, but I guess it's not uh, that spiritual anyway. So I was like, okay, I reached the limit that of, of what I can do with this. And also what I got a bit frustrated with, with time is uh, all the patients that were coming to me, they were like, well, you know, I'm stressed out, I, I, I'm I, overworked and things like that. And you, they're coming to you with the idea that fix me, you know. And I was like, well, all I can do if I go according to the um, traditional medicine is give you pills or, uh, you know, suggest a surgery. But that's not going to fix your problem because the problem is is most likely to be deeper than that. It's probably because you don't like what you're doing. Uh, you, you're very stressed because this is something you're forcing yourself to do. Uh, this is not in alignment with your true nature. And the fact in the matter is you're overstressed. You need to rest. You need to find your true pa passion and just follow your bliss. Um, so I was to the point where I was like, well, why am I doing this? This is not really helping. I could probably provide something better if I was offering something where the person could find themselves and follow a, a healthier path, like something that's going to make make them happier because they're going to be doing something they really enjoy. Mm -hmm. So at that point, you know, I started Your Nature on Veil about, uh, I guess, five years ago. I started working on that. Um, at the time, you know, I was mostly studying. So I was working through my studies and, and working at the same time. So it's a slow process. But um, I'm still learning. And I, the thing with that is it's wonderful because I like the fact that you develop yourself when it comes to spirituality. You, you can't assume that it's just one thing that's black or white. It's always something in, in progress, if you see what I mean. So mm -hmm. for me, uh, I figured my business is also myself progressing through it, you know. And I, as, as I'm defining a bit more of what I want to do, I know nowadays that this is really all about, you know, working with self-expression and working through expressing your, your emotion and living through your spirituality and connecting to your true self. Because to me, what I found with most of my patients is they were unhappy. They were sick because they were not connected to their true self. They were just doing things that were not having real purpose for them. They were not they were not fulfilling their true nature, basically. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. I was listening to Dr. Oz not long ago, a while ago, and he was, I think, I think he was talking about Dick Cheney. Actually, I was not, no, it wasn't, it wasn't Dr. Oz. It was actually Dick Cheney or a famous politician that was out there and talking and he had written his biography and he had like three heart attacks. And after the third one, he asked his doctor, you know, uh, Will I will I be able to work again? And his doctor said, you know, because oftentimes with heart attacks, you got to stop working after a while. And he said, um, his doctor said, you know, working has never killed anybody. 
is just working at something that you do not love or have passion for, that kills, that's what kills people. And I think it comes down to what you just said that I think that's interesting and it's so important, as you mentioned, to follow your bliss. Um, yeah, so I, I understand totally what, 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 what you mean. Um, I, how did you name your na- nature? I love the name nature unveil. How, how did it come about? How did it come to you? How did it come to me? Yeah. Well, the, I think the main thing with that, why, what uh, I wanted to represent is the fact that, you know, you know to uh, reconnect to your true nature, it also comes through reconnecting to nature outside as well. I think that the main problem nowadays is uh, we really disconnected from nature, from trees, from I'm not a tree hugger or anything like that, but I truly, truly enjoy being surrounded by nature, plants, and things like that. It just makes me so happy. I don't know. It's it's a so good vibration. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a good vibration. Like if you if you would see my office right now, I have a bunch of plants, and I, I'm almost uh, getting invaded in here. But um, <laughs> yeah, I, I really enjoy being surrounded by plants. I think everybody should reconnect with nature at the same time i think your nature on veil for me was good going back to your true nature but in a natural way as well and connecting to the source connecting to your roots you know going back to like touching the soil you know being barefoot and in the, in the grass or whatever like that like being connected to the true things because nowadays everybody's just like running like crazy and I mean, I, I'm no exception. I'm running like crazy too. And I'm sometimes like, oh, okay, wait, Solange. <laughs> mm. That's not what you want to do. You've been doing that for some time before. That was a dead end. It wasn't an happy time. So now just do something you enjoy. Go uh, see the things that you really want to see and don't waste time with things that make you unhappy, you know? Mm. So your know, nature unveil for me was recon- reconnecting to your true self. Like, unveil everything that's hidden like don't hide yourself don't pretend to be some somebody that you're not i think a lot of people uh, they pretend to be something not because they they want people to like them they want people to uh, to um i don't know like give them a job and they think they have to be something else so that people can like them and i don't believe in that i think that at some point you have to be able to say hey this is what i am and i'm happy with that that's great i don't need to have Tons, tons of people around me that don't really enjoy me and don't really like talking to me. I, I need to be connected with things that are true to me and that make me vibrate and, you know, be truly, truly happy. Yeah. I, th- I think I mentioned that to you before. Uh, well, I don't think I know I mentioned that to you before. But I, one, th- one thing I really admire about you is your simplicity. When you talk to people, when you, you just have this simplicity, simplistic way about yourself like it's not you know it's not arrogant it's not loud it's not it's just for some reason you're just simple you're just like you know like you have a, you have a a smooth vibe <laughs> you know yeah. it just uh, yeah just a smooth vibe a vibe where it's not offensive you know what i mean and and i think that a lot of people can relate to you and 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 will like you this way anyway just my opinion <laughs> <laughs> well thank you I, I appreciate you saying that yeah. that's always good to know <laughs> <laughs> all right once again we're here with solange tardif she's a friend of mine she's a colleague of mine and uh she's the founder of your nature unveiled which helps people improve their well-being and vitality um all right you talk about the state of amazement w- what does it mean to live in the state of amazement well to me there's something like, you know, when I, I told you about the fact that I discovered kind of God around 19 years old, um, I kind of discovered at the same time what it meant to be in amazement. Um, because I think a lot of people, you know, when you're mainstream, you hear a lot about us, uh, of stuff about uh, appreciation and how, how much you need to appreciate and things like that. But appreciate is one thing. But I think amazement is is it's bigger than that in a way because you like looking at life as a child you know you're looking at it like with brand new eyes and you're like wow hey this tree is great how how did it come there you know and and when you live like that you cannot be unhappy it's just not possible because you're just like 
looking at it like through God's eyes in a way, you know, like this is what I discovered when I was 19. God is just amazed with you. It's just, it's just like, wow, this is like what I created. And this is so great because I learned so much stuff about myself through this person and through this thing, because we all part of God, you know, we all part of, this is his energy in a, in a way, you know, we, we, we just to express a little bit of him in a way or her, because like I said, I say him, but it could be her. Um, in my mind, it's just like living in a state of amazement is so great because you have like a deep joy inside and you just look at everything with brand new eyes. And I think this is something that everybody should try to practice in a way, because when you do that, just do that like 10 minutes in your day and it's going to change completely everything about your day. Like if you were in a bad mood, mood I guarantee you, you're going to change like like. 360 degrees okay because living in a state of amazement is just like changing your vibration it's changing everything about the way that your body stands and everything um i'm just gonna give you an example i don't know what do you like in life uh frederick oh, i love writing i love um communicating like we do now you know i love podcasting but i love walking in the forest i would say if there's a moment of solitude that I, I I have this path close to my home where when I'm stressed, when I'm anxious, when I I just go like there's a forest close to where I live and I just go there all the time. I would say walk in a forest. Walking in a forest? Yeah. Well, there you go. So when you go over there and you start, you know, letting yourself being filled with the energy around you, because everything is energy, you know, everything is is atoms and electrons and everything. So we always interconnect with everything around us. And when you live in a state of amazement, you just like allow yourself to be amazed by that. Hey, how was it made? How come it's working so well? I mean, the the human body is so great. There's so much stuff about it, you know, like the muscles, how it moves, how everything is, you know. Hey, it's so great. How can you not find it great when you know how, how amazing it is? And who did it? You know, how did it come to, to be? It's so, I don't know. Personally, when I start thinking about that, I'm just like, what well, this is, this, how could, I, how, how could I not be amazed by that? This is so awesome. Like for myself, I, I love to go like in nature as well, but I am a cat person. So I love cats. So mm -hmm. if I find I'm depressed, I'm just going to go and look at, you know, pictures of uh, little kittens or something like that. It's my deep secret. So don't tell. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm going to see kittens and it's just like changed my mood completely. So, like, they're so easy going and stuff. And I'm amazed at seeing out how, how, like, uh, easy they go with the flow. You know, a cat, they don't bother with, you know, like, working or anything like that. They just go with the flow. They enjoy playing, things like that. So I'm amazed at looking at that, like, how animals interact with each other and things like that. So it's just, when I see that, I think when you take, at least 10 to 15 minutes doing that in your day, it could change your life. Seriously. Yeah, actually, I should have said spending time with my boy, with my new boy, because all you, you brought that to my mind with when you talk about the kittens. Um, yeah, I would say the same thing, because I have cats too. I have two, we have two cats over here. <clears throat> and I would say that my boy now starts to smile and look at, you know, in amazement. And it's, I can see feel purity in him you know what i mean it's there's no there's no corruption there. <laughs> you know what i mean in his being in his eyes and his smile is just he smiles because he wants to smile and that's just that that is really something that i love and that amazes me and i, I think that that's what it comes down to i think it it, it relates to what you just said basically oh um, yeah oh absolutely yes I think I think it's um, life is uh, you have enough challenge in life that you shouldn't spend all your time being dragging your feet through the things you don't like. You should go for the things you like and, and being in, like just go for the stuff that you really enjoy and let yourself be amazed. You know, yeah. that's, that's the way I see it. Even the worst thing can be amazing when you stop at looking at it and say, well, how did it come to be, you know? Even if it doesn't look that great, in the end, you know, when you start wondering about that and and you think about the fact this is a part of God, this is a part of his design in a way, and mm -hmm. wow, yeah. what a master, mastermind, yeah. eh? I don't know. It's just, just um, I don't know. Mm -hmm.
just, just to clarify things, when you talk about God, you're not talking about Christianity in particular. What, what are you talking about? Because because some people will say, well, it's, it's Christianity. It's you know, I don't know uh, what is she talking about. Is it Catholic? Is it what is it exactly? Well, I'm saying God, but you, like I said, you could say the source if you prefer that, or if you like to refer to the universe. I think it's the same thing. I think God to me is an entity that's all around us and inside us, and we are part of it. We are um, basically a stream that's coming from it. It's not uh, a he or a she. It's it's just a presence, an entity that's there. And I think when I reconnect to my for me, God is, is my higher self in a way. When I go to my higher self, I, I reconnect with God. And, and my higher self is probably, probably connected with God as well anyway. So mm-hmm. to me, God is not uh, nothing to do with religion, nothing to do with it, really. It's more all about energy and being connected to your true self and, and see what you really are, like a divine a divine being as well. Mm-hmm. So um, when I say God, it's just because I'm trying to simplify the concept. But <laughs> but if you if you prefer saying the source or uh, the universe, you can say that as well. But I think the problem with that is it's very large, and people don't don't really relate to that either. You mm-hmm. see what I mean? So yeah. I think um, to have a true and personal relationship. With this entity, you need to be able to personalize it in a way and and make it approachable. Approachable. You need to be able to have a relationship with it. Um, so this is why I say God because I want to be. I want people to be able to relate to it, not just say this is something vague that's there, but we don't really know what it is. You know. Uh, so that's that's my way of relating yeah. to that. Uh, I was I was on a debate last week uh, on, on another podcast show and um, you know these guys are atheists and I got on and we oh. uh, yeah <laughs> and and you know I was a spiritual guy the, 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 the gaga and they were the you know and they were they were they, they were constantly coming back to okay but prove to us that God exists like prove what's the proof like you can prove that you know, I don't know, uh, you can scientifically prove things, but sh- how, wh- how would you, va- how would you have answered that question on how, like prove to me in a, as a fact, not as a belief, but as a fact that this entity that you talk about mm-hmm. exists? Um, I think it's, well, first of all, to me, God or you know the source is something that's really personal to everybody. I mean, it's when it comes to spirituality, you cannot say this is this for you and this is that for everybody because I think um, it's something that should be very personal. Okay, um, so to answer your question, I don't think you can prove that because in a way, everybody is going to manifest what they can conceive and mind. Like if you cannot conceive that God exists. That's never going to exist because you don't allow that to come into your life. You know what I mean? We are creators. We are able to manifest what's going on in our life. We are divine as well. So if you decide that that, that uh, it doesn't exist, you're not going to be able to manifest that in your life because this concept just doesn't exist in your life. Mm-hmm. You see what I mean? But for myself, the reason why I say that, that it does exist is because I felt it. I felt it. And I don't think I ever felt something like that anywhere else it's it's just incredible the feeling it's like you're plugged to uh, 200 volts you know of energy pure energy you know like it's crazy i don't think you can say that it's not there when you felt it but i did allow myself to feel it as well i allowed myself to experience it and to to um vibrate through through that you know but somebody that doesn't want to see that because it's too scary they think that it's it's kind of pointless to see that because they can have cannot have tangible proof is never going to allow that to come. And I think personally, well, if you live well with that, that, that's fine. You can do that if you prefer that. But I think if somebody's, if something is going to help me to live better in my life, why should I deprive myself from it? I think if it's going to help me to give purpose to my life and feel happier, what's the point of pushing it away? I mean, 
it, it's not about, you know, following somebody blindly. It's following your true self. It's reconnecting with your divine se- self. Mm-hmm. It's it's going through the, the source of what you really are. So if you don't believe in God, at least believe in yourself. Believe in your true divine self. That's what I'm saying about that. Uh, yeah, and I kind of had the same answers as, as, you know, as you did. And plus, there, there was a musician there on the panel, and he, he said that music comes to him. Like, he creates the music. You know, and to me, it's like I speak to artists all the time, and it's like, I don't know. I just don't buy it. Anyway, that's just my opinion. Uh, and it's their opinion. And, and we agree to disagree. And, you know, so, but anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Her <laughs> name is Solange Tardif. She's the founder of Your Nature Unveiled, which helps people improve their well-being and vitality. And guys, right before continuing this conversation, conversation, we would like to thank those pledged to our Patreon page. You are really helpful to the show, and we are grateful for your help. In case you're wondering, Patreon is a simple way for you to contribute to the podcast every single month and get super cool exclusive rewards in return. I promise you will love the perks. Our Patreon page is at frederickby.com. That's frederick with a C, by like bye-bye.com, and click Patreon in the header. Money is used to cover our production costs and editing time. You can contribute for as low as one little tiny dollar, so you can go now to frederickby.com. All right. Let me ask you this, Solange. Um, why is it, why is, why is creativity such a powerful tool when it comes to reconnecting to your true self? You know, why um, is it so important? Well, that's a very good question, uh, Frederick. Um, I think, I think everybody has a part of them that's very creative. The question is, are you tapping in, into it? Are you using it? Or are you just following what everybody else wants you to do? To me, creativity is, um, it's, it's not just about arts. Obviously, you can be creative in your work when you, you are an architect or when you're an engineer or anything like that. But I still think that arts is a very wonderful way to actually tap into your, your, your true self. Because when it comes to arts, you have to be in a way some sometimes like very inspired to to pro, product uh, to sorry to uh, produce something that's going to be very uh, uh, appealing to others you know in a way so i think when it comes to creativity creativity um you have to tap into your deeper self you need to be in, in connection with your your divine self in a way because uh, i know for myself when i write or when i i play or sing when I'm truly connected with my divine self, I, I produce the best work ever. And this is when I feel like I can be myself as well, because a lot of people, um, sometimes they feel scared of what other, other people might think about them. They feel uh, scared about judgment and, and things like that. But I found for myself, especially through singing, um, it allowed me to share an intimate part of myself that I don't necessarily share with everybody. Because when you sing, you have to be true. And it's funny enough, I don't know if, well, for those that don't know necessarily how all singing goes, when you sing, you have to use, use your emotion as well to convey the message. You know, it's not just about sounds. Sounds is one thing. You need to be able to use your instrument, which is your voice, to produce the sounds. But if you're not, you're not anchored into yourself, like you're, you're not anchored properly, your voice is going to go all over, all over the place. You're going to be like wavering and you're going to be like, stressed out and your voice is not going to sound as clear as it could and sometimes you need to be able to convey your emotions through it so for me singing was a very good catalyst to express my emotions and express my true self you like share my myself to others you know so i find that creativity creativity is great for that it's a it's a, an excellent way to share your true feelings express yourself express what's going on inside your emotions uh, in a way that you would probably not used usually you know i think a lot of people have, they fear judgment and when they do creative stuff they say they can hide behind the fact maybe that it's not the true self or they're just playing the game or whatever but but still i i don't mind that because i think at least they get to express what they truly feel they need um if they need to talk about their sadness about something then they get to do it through writing maybe or maybe they can use um the 
place through theater to do that. I think it's just a great tool. It's, it's such a powerful tool to actually reconnect with yourself and, and what you really want like, to express. And um, I think it's uh, for myself, it helped me to, to know myself better. And uh, in the long run, I, I discovered myself through it a lot, like through writing, singing, and even playing and, and theater, you know. Um, it's, it's such a great tool, I think. You know, you keep talking about reconnecting to your true self, reconnecting to your true self. How do you know when you are in alignment with your true self and your true purpose? Well, you know, we actually talked about it a bit um, already. Yeah. I think, I think that, you know, when you feel like you're, you're following your bliss. Basically, I'm just going to give you an example here. Um, as you might know through my biography or my uh, my curriculum vitae, you might you might know already. Uh, it's uh, I did a, a master degree in theater at some point, mm -hmm. and uh, you know that was very analytic kind of process, and it was very uh, like a lot of uh, rewriting and analyzing what everybody was saying. It was very uh, for me. I found out after a while. I'm very stubborn, so I, I figured I'm going to finish it. But the thing is, I, I kind of discovered through that that I wasn't following my true purpose because I wasn't enjoying the process. Mm -hmm. And, and the, like, you know, at some point you need to be able to say, well, if I keep banging my head against the wall, why do I keep doing this? I don't enjoy that. So why do I keep doing that? And I think you need to be following your heart where it says, wow, I'm getting excited about this. I'm getting excited because I, I get to help people. I get to, to follow the things that I like to do. And when I talk about that, I'm passionate and I, I vibrate like my whole being is vibrating when I talk about this subject. When you follow your true path and when you reconnect with yourself, you feel good, basically. You just feel like ama amazing because um, you, you are following what you really want to be, your true purpose. And my true purpose for me, like I didn't know it at first, I guess, but my true purpose for me was to help others, probably through like through arts, but through medical stuff as well and through training people. I found that for myself, this is what was making me happy when I feel like I can help people and help them to find a different way of living their lives and things like that. I feel very good about myself. I feel like I'm fulfilling my purpose when I do that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I think reconnecting yourself means mostly that you need to, to feel joy. You need to feel like deep inner joy about what you're doing. And if you don't, then that's not meant for you. Mm -hmm. Don't bother, don't bother doing something that you don't enjoy. Like a lot of people, like, they're going to end up doing it because, oh, well, I need to earn money. I need to have money. Yes. But you could have money doing something else that you enjoy better. Maybe you're not going to make as much money at first. But if you're truly in alignment with what you enjoy, you're going to have passion about it. And everybody's going to see it. It's going to seep through you. You know, it, it's going to be you're going to be glowing, basically. So you're going to attract all kind of people that are going to enjoy being with you. And that's going to make the difference, I think. Um, so, yeah, reconnecting to your true self, it's. You feel it. You feel like this deep peace inside. You feel like you're complete and that you finally, you know, when you, you go around and you, you keep seeking stuff, you, you don't feel like you can rest properly. But when you really follow your path, you rest, you feel restful, I guess. I don't know how to say that, but you feel like you're at peace and harmony. Mm -hmm. And yeah, basically. All right, we got a few minutes left. Um, what are your plans with your nature unveiled? What do you want to do? My plans? First of all, right now, well, I'm kind of concentrating on uh, creating a, a course where there's going to be four parts to it. Um, it's going to be one model about nutrition. After that, I'm going to be talking about uh, corrective conditioning and and introduce after that the uh, you know creative aspect and spiritual aspect. What I want to do is create you know, an environment for people to come and participate in those workshops so that they can develop um, side of side of themselves, uh, sorry, side of uh, themselves where they, um, they explore their true self, you know, where they actually reconnect with their true nature. So my project that's coming up like for the next year is to put that in place and hopefully start teaching that on a regular basis, because I think that, um, uh, this is something that I would really, really enjoy to share with people, how to do that, how to get there. Like I said in the beginning, I don't think that you can just treat one aspect. I don't believe that you can help somebody with just 
treating one aspect. I think you need to look at somebody with as a global thing. You need to look at, you know, are they eating properly? Are they exercising pro- properly? Are they, you know, enjoying what they do? like using, you know, uh, artistic stuff to express their emotions? Or, uh, you know, are they having some spiritual, spirituality in their lives as well? Like, because you feel pretty empty if you don't have a, a little bit of that in your life. Um, no matter how it shows, uh, it could be like Buddhist or, or anything else, but you need to have some th- something where you can reconnect to yourself. So I think my big project for the next year is going to be that. And of course, I'm going to keep, you know, uh, doing some life coaching individual and, uh, probably some training as well. Like, like I'm doing right now. This is actually how we know each other, right? So, um, yes, that's a big product project for the next year. Awesome. So I know you're doing your, your, your building website right now. You have, you are, actually, you already have a website, uh, but people can also reach you by phone. How can they reach you? Uh, yes, they can reach me by phone at, uh, 514-313-9534. And my website is in French mostly right now, but it's going to be translated in English as well. So uh, anybody that wants to do it in English, I can provide the service in English. Um, so if you want to go and visit the website and you speak French for now, uh, but it's going to be in English soon, you can go to sanaturedévoilée.com dot wix wix site dot com so uh, if you go sanature it's s a n a t u r e d e v o i l e e so sanature de voile dot wix site dot com uh, slash coaching and you should find me there um I'm still developing my website right now, but it's going to be running uh, pretty soon. Uh, and uh, obviously, if you're interested in joining into a workshop, you can register through the website as well. If you want to uh, reach me through the website, you can uh, ask me questions, and I'm going to try to answer you as soon as uh, I get a chance. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome, Solange. Thank you so much. Thank ah, you. Have a good day. Great talking to you, and hopefully uh, – there's some people out there that got inspired by what I said. And um, if not, well, <laughs> you can always chat with me and then we can talk about more stuff. <laughs> yes? Awesome. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. All righty, guys. All right. Thank you so much, Solange. Thank you so much, Solange. I love talking to that to that woman. Amazing. How did you like the conversation? Ain't that, ain't that cool? Ain't that cool? <laughs> and by the way, guys, so it's time for me to ride off into the sunset. Ride off into the sunset. Hey, creativity, spirituality, always fun, always fascinating. And uh, actually, actually, I think she's starting to be one of my favorite people. Somebody I know personally. Solange is somebody that I, I know and respect personally. I'm just just amazing person to speak to. Uh, guys, if you are an Amazon shopper, when you use our Amazon link at frederickbuy.com, Amazon kicks back a few bucks to the show. It helps cover production costs at no additional cost to you. No hidden fees, no nothing. So if you like what you hear, you can help by going over to frederickbuy.com. Click on the, in the, click the Amazon link in the sidebar for all your online shopping. It is really that simple. And also we're looking for new hosts, guys. Uh, if you are somebody who is entrepreneurial with a message to spread, a positive message to spread, um, you know, reach, reach to us, reach us, reach us at frederickby.com and click become a host in the header. Um, you know, podcasting, we can lead you by the hand. If you're starting out, we can lead you by the hand. It's very, very affordable. So it's very, very, it's pretty, it's pretty darn cool. Also, the Creative Magic Store is open, alive, and well. It's designed with meaning, meant to inspire you, tap into your intuition, and add a little bit of magic into your life. Uh, you can go to frederickby.com and click Creative Magic Store in the header. Also, leave a review on iTunes. Uh, you know, it's free every time you download it on iTunes or any other platform of your choosing. And it is listener supported. Tell a friend, leave a five star review. It really helps a brother out. It helps us. And, um, that's it. I'm going to go out and take care of the, of the toddler here, three month old toddler crying. And, and, you know, it's so cool. Start to smile now. But anyway, <laughs> with this guy, stay safe and don't forget, live with purpose, passion and love. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Frederick Bye Show. 
For more information, go to frederickby.com. That's Frederick with a C, buy like bye-bye.com. Bye.